here's an example of t pushing the rectangle method, at least in theory, all, as far as we can go and getting it to the limit stage, uh, which is called, the official name for that is a Riemann sum. Um, Riemann from the 19th century kind of formalized this, at, even after people had been kind of doing, using the ideas for hundreds of years. Nobody ever really knew how to do it rigorously until people like him. So what we're going to do is the area under the graph of y equals square root of 1 plus x from x equals 3 to x equals 7. And we'd like to find a formal expression, meaning something we can write down, but we don't really know actually how to calculate, for the exact area, not an approximation. It'll really be, in practice, it's really instructions for getting better and better and better approximations. Um, but we can think of it as sort of a formal expression for the exact area. Now, just really briefly, I'll say that this is, at the same time, we'll solve the equivalent problem if the velocity of a particle is given by root 1 plus t, then we're equivalently going to find the displacement of that particle from time t equals 3 to t equals 7. We won't find where it is at t equals 3 or t equals 7, but we'll find the difference between those, the two position uh, values, and that's s of 7 minus s of 3. Now, of course, saying that equivalent problem, as I said in the other video, um, that already leads you to the better way to do this problem, which is, hey, I, can, can we do that by antiderivatives? But um, let's actually do this as you would do with a rectangle method. Because, believe it or not, it's even once you learn antiderivatives in the fundamental theorem, it's still really important to know that this is out there. And I'll, I'll show you examples where it's still crucial. But this one, uh, we'll, we'll go on with this one. So, we want to set up Given a fixed n number of rect, or I guess we don't need number of n rectangles, and a choice of method, we know how to set this up. We know, well, let's see. Hmm. Let's set it up with the right endpoint first, and then if you want to go on with the video after that, I'll go on for more, and it's kind of up to you. Let's say right endpoint. That's a little bit simpler to, simpler to set up. Well, let's see. The first thing we need to do is get our delta x. That's always, always, always b minus a over n. And that's 7 minus 3 over n, or 4 over n. And what's going to make this a little different from some problems is that we're not actually going to put in n as a number. It's going to be a variable, and we're eventually going to talk about taking the limit as n goes to infinity. OK. Now, what about the x sub k's? These are the points at which we're going to evaluate this function to get the heights of the rectangles. Well, for the right endpoint method, we don't want to use 3, but we start with 3. Well, let me put, remind you of the general formula. It's k delta x. We start with the left endpoint of the interval, and then we step up by delta x's, k equals 1 to n. So in this case, that's going to be 3 plus 4k over n, putting in the expression for delta x. OK, so then the area, oop, the area would approximately be, if we didn't take a limit, it'd be delta x, the width of everything, times the sum. And now k here is just a temporary number variable. It's just labeling all the rectangles temporarily until we sum them up, and then it goes away. And that's going to be f of x sub k. And so it's approximately equal to, for any given fixed n, the sum of, OK, now I'm going to plug in this expression for xk into this function. With the x's, it was this version up here. So I'm going to take that function. This is a bit like writing down the definition of the derivative. You have to take that function, and everywhere you see an x, you plug in that whole thing. Be careful with your parentheses. OK, so that is an expression for if I had n equals 10, for example, I'd calculate all 10 of these numbers from, from k equals 1 to 10, plug them into the function to get the heights of the rectangles, times 4 over 10 for the widths of the rectangles, and add it all up and get an explicit number. But 
the idea is we hope, and you have to take a much harder class to prove this, we hope that we can turn that into an equality by simply taking the limit as n goes to infinity. And it's easy to write that, but it's easier said than done to actually do that out explicitly. We have no idea how to take those limits. For very, very, very special contrived cases, simple cases like x and x squared, we can actually take the limit. And the, the book talks about that. I'm going to de-emphasize that. Um, because it's exactly those simple functions that we could use the fundamental theorem for anyway. Um, for this function, it would be really, really, really hard to do this directly. And any person, any sane person, would uh, actually calculate this using the fundamental theorem. But that's how you would set it up as a right endpoint method. Okay, so let me actually r remind us. Right endpoint method. Okay, so what if we use the left endpoint method? It'd be pretty similar. Let's just copy it. What do we have to change? Well, the delta x is still the same. The, it's still the limit of a sum, and um, but it's the xk's that are different. Instead of starting out by starting at a and immediately stepping up delta x, going from 1 through n, we don't want to step up delta x the very first time. So the left endpoint method, what's different about it is x sub k is going to start with a. But then if we put in k minus 1 times delta x, that means that when k x is equal to 1, we won't step. And when k equals a 2, we do one step. And then it goes up to k minus 1 steps. And it won't quite get to the far end. And so that just means that that's going to be, in this case, 3 plus 4 over n times k minus 1. And so it just makes basically turns that into a k minus 1. So it's really pretty similar. Now what about, let's put it down here. What about the midpoint method? If you want to see that. OK, same deal. The only difference is the x sub k. We're going to start with a, but then we immediately have to step up by a delta x over 2. Oops. OK, and then we're going to step by, k, by delta x's. We want to start at the left-hand end with the end, edge of the end point, edge of the whole interval, step halfway into the middle of a subinterval, and then, oops, we don't need a, a dividing. Then step by delta x so that we stay in the middle of the intervals. And we can summarize that by a, oops, that doesn't need a fraction, plus 2k plus 1 delta x over 2. Because the 2k over 2 gives me this, and the 1 gives me this. OK, so in this case, it would be 3 plus 2k plus 1, and delta x over 2, that becomes a 2 over n. And so now I'm just going to copy this, and that's going to be, that's what's going to appear here. Quantity 2k plus 1 times 2, let me put the 2 in front of it, over n. And that's the midpoint method. So they're just variations on the same idea. A limit of a sum, the delta x, and I've pulled the delta x out in front because it's the same for all the terms in the sum, times function values evaluated at all the points. We'll do some more examples of this, but I wanted to show you one explicitly.